Hey, this is Dan White with another battle report for you. This week I'm playing P. Fiora, or Fiora Priestess of the Flame. She's got a Hierophant, a Templar, and a Vanquisher. Running an Avatar of Menoth by itself, or under the grace of Menoth. Initiate Tristan Durant is running a Vigilant. I have a Covenant of Menoth, Vassal Mechanic, Choir of Menoth, Viscoth Juvia and Honor Guard, Holy Zealots, Monolith Bearer, and Flame Guard Cleansers. You might also see a sneaky little uh, Vassal of Menoth, just a little free two points I gave myself on this game. No big deal. Uh, there's a lot of Warjacks, and the point of this list is to abuse and utilize Blazing Effigy. I think that's her her highlight spell. And Flame Guard Cleansers also add a nice bit of control that synergizes well with her Wall of Fire. My bro, Mike, is playing Butcher 3, Commander Zaktivia. He comes with his uh, War Argus unit. He also included a War Dog. His Ruin, Madeline Corbeau, Gormandy Wolf, First Mate Hawk, Saxon Orc, Lord Rock Bottom, two units of Doom Reavers, Alexia and the Risen, two units of Max Pressgangers, and Lady Ayana and Master Halt. Now, where I just snuck in two points, my brother decided to sneak out four points. I believe he forgot to deploy Lady Ayana and Master Halt, so ha! But uh, his list is still no joke. He's got a ton of advanced deploy units, and because he has First Mate Hawk, all those little, uh, what do you call it, press gangers, they're not going to be scared off by their Doom Reaver buddies. So yeah, that's a lot of dudes. Look at that line, holy cow. Yeah, we're playing a scenario with two things in the middle, I don't know what it's called. I will sub that in later. I won the turn to go first. I'm just allocating one focus to each of my Warjacks, except the avatar he creates his own. And they're gonna run up there. I am still learning Menoth. This army was actually given to me on loan by a local press ganger, Steve Groom. So it's not a list I built myself, more so that it is a list that is mostly painted and I wanted to try out. The multiple warjacks though was my idea. As I mentioned in the kind of the pre-ramble. And especially that Vigilant. He's not a very popular warjack. For four points you're getting a, a light warjack that has PS11 fists, but he's naturally armor 21. And under Tristan Durant's Fortify spell, he goes to armor 23, cannot be knocked down or moved, and he provides a, kind of a, a super girded to people around him. Let's see if I can't get the exact wording on that. Fortify, target warjack in the battle group gets plus two arm. Affected model on any friendly models base to base cannot be knocked down, pushed, or moved by a slam. So he can still be TK'd, but not pushed or moved by a slam or knocked down. That four points is an expendable speed bump, but it's a very hard to remove speed bump. He's gonna run in front of my choicier jacks like the Avatar and my Templar, and he's gonna hopefully soak up some charges. And that'll work nicely because then Fiora can just walk up and cast Blazing Effigy on that Warjack. Blazing Effigy does not need to be in my battle group, it's just target-friendly Warjack. The Templar is in there for insurance. He's kind of my avatar replacement once the avatar gets killed by my opponent. With Ignite, he gets up to a respectable POW, probably... I want to say POW 20... One? Let me double check that. Alright, so he's normally POW 17. Ignite will take him to POW 19, and the choir will take him to POW 21. 
Yes, speaking of the choir, I mentioned I'm kind of new to Menoth. There, don't take anything away from my deployment with the choir. It's a real mess back there. I am still trying to figure out how to play with support models because when I played minions, we don't really have support models. We just run Gatorman Posse at people. So this is a, this is a pretty new experience for me. Ah, Wall of Fire, what an awesome spell. I need to get a cooler template for that. That spell's too cool for a white piece of paper. When you see a swarm of infantry across from you, the one nice thing about that is, even though they're advanced deploy and gonna be in my face pretty soon, I don't have to worry too much about target prioritization because there's just so much of the same stuff. It's more about just volume of attacks and target prioritization, so that kind of makes tactic-wise a little easier for me. I have to be I have to respond to his threat rather than create a threat of my own. And those little, uh... Oh, what are they called? They're in my list, I don't even know what they're called. Uh, zealots. Those Zealots. I, uh, this is my first time playing with them, and I think they're going to do pretty good with their, uh... Warding cannot be targeted by enemy spells for a round, or Fervor gains plus two to attack and damage rolls for an activation. That's pretty sweet. And they've got that little range five AoE three. And I believe the Zealots, or their, their UA makes them fearless. Let me double check. The Monolith Bearer does grant fearless, nice. Also his Greater Destiny is just amazing once per game. During the unit's activation, those uh, this model and the zealots do not suffer damage except from spells and feats. So they are going to be able to just walk right into his jam and live there for one turn, throwing little bombs that are going to also wreck face because you don't need to hit for much damage to kill Doom Reavers and Press Gangers. I think the only tactical decision I gotta worry about is be aware of the Butcher because he can close games and then be aware of the scenario because I can just lose if I don't get something in there. Look at that turn one, he's already shut me out of the scenario basically. Looks like I'm giving one to the Vanquisher. I have Ignite currently on the Templar, I've kept that. And uh, Fortify is on the Vigilant, I've kept that. These guys are gonna activate first. Looks like he's popping Greater Destiny. And I don't think he has a whole lot of spell, so I'm probably gonna go with Fervor. And we are going to walk up there and uh, get some dudes in the zone, which will last a turn, and then blow up some other guys with my bombs. So here goes bombs away. Boom. Bombs away.
I think they're better throwing bombs than they are in melee, but uh, probably could have done that a little better. Good news is the ones in melee needed to be in the zone, so I kind of need to put them there. Oh, and I uh, have that wall of fire I upkept. And I'm just keeping my Templar right behind it. Or not my Templar. You know what I mean, the Avatar. He's going to smack, boom. And then if he, if he does kill something, I think he ignites all models within an inch just to turn on fire. Yeah, Flame Burst is when this model boxes an enemy model with his sword. Enemy models within an inch become under the fire continuous effect. So Avatar didn't really kill anything, but he's going to have a really hard time killing the Avatar behind that firewall. And I got a vassal behind him, which a cheaty vassal. It shouldn't belong in the list, but he probably put up the... Uh, Oh, what is that thing called where you get to move away? Eh, you know what it is. Here comes my range 4 boom boom gun, or AoE 4, from the Vanquisher. Man, I'll take uh, two or three turns of that. I should have had my uh, vassal of Menoth just do the the second shot because that was pretty great. All right, there's the vigilant. He's a. Uh, I guess he's gonna try to disrupt some of the charges from my left flank by going over there. Like I mentioned, ideally he should be in front of my in front of my uh, avatar, but I'm still learning. And the Templar went over there and killed a single model. Not a super great activation. Here come the cleansers. You know, people hate the cleansers, and I've been I've played probably three or four games with them just looking for an excuse not to play Avengers, but every time they have just done way more than five points worth of work. So they're doing, looks like we're doing a spray. Either that or we're doing the uh, combined CRA. They have an order where they can bust out that little template. Let me see what it's called. I think it's called incinerate models that receive this order can participate in a combined range attack the unit commander must be the primary attacker and the attack has a range 8 aoe 4 and pow 12. this attack causes fire damage the aoe remains in play for one round and is a cloud effect models entering or entering their activation and the aoe suffer a pow 12 damage fire roll the unit can only make one incinerate attack per activation, so... I mean, I can just have my unit leader and one grunt combined to do that order. And then I can have the rest of the guys do spray eights with their flamethrowers. I mean, it's pretty awesome second wave of uh, get work done models. I mean, it takes a... a a stiff breeze to kill them, but they're never going to be frontline. Oh, look at that. I must have snuck in two vassals of Menoth. I got one over there, too. And Liven, that's what they—that's what it's called. Got a couple of Livens going on. So I'm up four points. My opponent's down four points. No big deal.
There's Fiora. She's, uh, since it's a kill box, she's moving up a little closer. She also wants to be in a good position in a couple turns to, um, you know, cast her feet and just kill everything. Looks like it's probably my opponent's turn, he's figuring out what to do. Mike's no dummy, he knows he's uh, got to worry about that feat. He knows I can clear up lots of models quickly. And Mike is the type of guy who goes for assassinations whenever possible. He loves the 50-50s, the, the 60-40s, the 40-60s. He's all about killing casters. And that's probably why he plays the Butcher, because he's an amazing assassination caster. He's got a very deceptive threat range. With his unit, he gets granted vengeance. So if I were to kill any of those dogs, he just gets, you know, three inches next turn. His Energizer, which can get him, I want to say three inches. Let me take a look here. Yeah, he can get three inches on Energizer. Flashing Blade, which is a very cost-effective way to buy attacks because it hits everything in his line of sight for one focus. Impending Doom, enemy models within five are pushed five directly towards the Butcher. So that's pretty crazy. And then Silence of Death, if he needs it, just makes people lose tough and can't even transfer. So he's a... Uh, he can kill Warlocks and Warcasters alike. His feat is Red Haze. Zoctaver gains up to six focus. He cannot have more focus points in his current focus as a result of Red Haze. And enemy models in his melee range automatically fail command checks for one round. He is a beast. So even if he spends, you know, three for Energizer and two for a Pending Doom and, I don't know, upkeep Silence to Death, even if he spends all of his focus just to get to the caster, all he has to do is pop feet and just get six more focus in. There's not a caster in the game that's going to survive a six focus Butcher right next to him. So he hasn't done much. I don't know what Mikey's thinking. Oh, ambush. Look at that. That's where the four points are from. Let me update this video. He does not have Master Ayana and Holt. He has the Rednecks of Kador. The, oh man, what are these guys called? Rednecks of Kador. Come on, War Room, hurry up. Woodsman, Kossite Woodsman. That's how he spent his four points. Holy crap, I can't believe I forgot about this. And I tell you what, Woodsmen are amazing versus men off. They have so much juicy support back there. Those guys love to just sneak up behind and pop, pop. Pop, pop. All right, so he has his full 50 point list and I've got 
50 plus two vassals. No big deal. He got in a few charges with his uh, crappy Doom Reavers. I'm sure they're doing a lot of damage. And I'm going to enliven because I cheat. Anything to win, folks. Oh man, look at all those Doom Reavers right next to my Vigilant. That is going to be an amazing Blazing Effigy target next turn. Probably gonna pop. One, two, three. Three, four, maybe five if I'm lucky. I can pop five Doom Reavers before I even activate that model. Rut Row. Forgot about Ruin. That guy's no joke. Alright, Doom Reavers on his left side are gonna activate. And can't touch us. Mm, 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 mm. Can't touch me. That's what I imagine the monolith bearer and his crew must be singing right now with their little greater destiny up. The holy zealots. He's got a boombox. And some MC Hammer. Alright, his press gangers are forming a line on the edge of the zone. Careful not to touch that wall of fire. And I think they're just going straight for the scenario play. He is trying to lock me out. He's just giving me his little uh, Argus's. He's like, come. They're so close. Attack me. All right, well, scenario is an issue, but I'm still going to keep playing for attrition. I've got so many spells, and I've got a feet that just rock attrition. So we're going to keep going that route, and if I clear up enough dudes and he doesn't have anything to hold his scenario. So attrition will ultimately help me not lose by scenario. That's the plan. Uh, we upkept fortify. I believe we did not upkeep ignite. And... I'm not sure if I upkept that wall of fire or if I just forgot it, but that'll play itself out soon. The one downside of Blazing Effigy is it costs four. I guess it costs three with my Hierophant there. But it's not cheap. And I definitely want to cast it this turn because that is a lot of models it can kill. Oh, hell, if I was smart, I would just Blazing Effigy... Well, never mind. I don't need to overthink this. I was thinking how easy it would be to kill those guys in front of the Avatar and just have the Avatar walk up and hit Gorman. But I don't need to waste mana for that. I've got a whole bunch of cleansers back there. Between that whole unit, some of them should be able to hit some defense 13 press gangers. Anywho, looks like my holy zealots did a good job clearing up some uh, Doom Reavers. Wire, I think, is activating. We'll probably pray for battle. Vanquisher and the Avatar, or the Templar. 
too far to get the avatar. It's like I'm moving the vassals, they're both just enlivening. Vanquisher is coming on up to the east side. Deluxe compartment in the sky. He's gonna take a shot at the objective. Oh, that's surprising. He only did a few points of damage to it. And some splash damage to one little grunt. There we go. Blazing effigy time, boys and girls. Boom. Pop, pop. Ah, oh, that's amazing. Looks like he made one tough check, which is annoying. But that was fun. And you know, I forget, but uh, Fiora herself has some nice spray eight flamethrowers. That's something I should always remember. She's not just, she has a spell that makes her a melee badass, but she's got some spray eights that set things on fire. That should not be forgotten. It's a good way to clear up, clear up jacks. They can suffer the POW 12 and be just fine. Oh, I didn't forget. Is she doing a spray? Maybe. I think so. Come on, Fiora. We got one. Yeah, I must have upkept wall fire. I mean, it's super defensive and it stops him from killing my avatar, but realistically, what is he gonna kill my avatar with? I guess the butcher. And the butcher can set himself on fire or take a pout 12 and uh, the butcher has reach though. Yeah, upkeeping that spell was pretty dumb. It does very little. Ah, you see that on my left side there? I've got the Templar right behind my Vigilant. That's an ideal kind of deployment because I welcome his Ruin to come in there and smash my Vigilant to pieces. That way I can just mop up his Ruin with my Templar. That would be ideal. And Unfortunately, Ruin gets Pathfinder when he charges, so he can probably get a, a charge lane on my Templar, but for Jacks that don't have Pathfinder, it's going to be really annoying to get past that little Vigilant to go after the more juicier targets in the back. That looks like some Cleanser smoke. Boom, boom. Gorman doesn't care. He's pro fire. God, cleansers do so much work. People who think they're bad are dumb. And this Scoth, Juvia, and Roven in the Honor Guard. I forgot about you guys. They are running to engage Saxon Orc. I think their synergy is with the Vanquisher. If he has models that have stealth or if he has lots of clouds, I can give that model, I think, Menoth Sight or Menoth Vision. It basically ignores most things like clouds and stealth and whatnot. 
and unlike most support, they do hit decently hard. They're weapon masters, so they're kind of a nice third wave that surprise. Like, hey, you've killed all my models. Surprise, I've got the Biscoff Juvia Robin in his honor guard. Menoth Sight. Choose a friendly model, friendly faction model. While in this model's command range for one round, a chosen model ignores stealth and ignores cloud effects when determining line of sight. They can also cleanse and get rid of Animai and continuous effects in their command range, or they can negation, remove one focus or fury point from enemy models currently in this model's command range. All right, so my bros huge swarth of infantry is looking thinner and thinner every turn and I'm not losing nearly as much as he is however he still has the butcher the butcher so he wants to kill my caster I can tell but I think that uh that little cleanser cloud is really annoying him He does not have line of sight to too many things with that cloud in front of him. Oh, I smell some Gorman black oil coming, but uh, black oil is a lot less scary. Whoa, where the hell did Gorman go? I think Gorman just moved and took a free strike. Hmm. Yeah, he's definitely positioning for an assassination. He's got his models in the cloud so he can see through it now. His dogs are charging the objective, getting out of Butcher's way. And Butcher is charging the Avatar. Uh, so he must have Energizer to get that far into the cloud. Now he's charging. He's on, f he took a POW 12, probably did no damage. All right, going after the Avatar. And he must have done that spell that pulls everything within five inches near him. Because he's got a whole swarth of buddies right next to him. And I can just do some flashing blades. Man, where's my book at? The book should have had no... S oh. Stupid. Hossite Woodsman, they killed my book. If my book had no spells, I wouldn't have to worry about flashing blades. Darn Consite Woodsman. Alright, the Butcher did Impending Doom. That's the name of the spell that swoops up all models with enemy models within five and pushes them directly towards me. Directly towards the Butcher in any order he chooses. Wow, that's a 665 over there. He is just bashing face. Uh, Avatar tried to enliven out of there, but he couldn't get too far. Oh boy. I think he's, uh, he's definitely flashing blading, but I think he's missed quite a few times on my caster. I spoke too soon because that's a dead caster. Alright. Hador wins. The Butcher. Nice job.